now let's go on to the concept of what is a dihedral angle okay now uh, here you see a small stretch of a ball and stick representation now this is another representation of a small stretch of a polypeptide and again the main backbone is always the same cl uh, c prime n c alpha c prime n so the backbone is always like this now over here these four atoms now i'm going to circle them i'm going to use green as a color this atom this atom this atom and this atom these four atoms define the phi angle which is c n c alpha c prime okay the psi angle now i'm going to change color and try sky blue n c alpha c prime n define the psi angle okay so we are saying four atoms are defining a dihedral angle or it's also called as a tor torsion angle with the angle phi between these two atoms angle psi between these two atoms and the third angle is the omega angle and i'll change color here again this is omega and omega is basically this angle and again uh, n n c alpha c prime n c alpha so these four atoms this doesn't look like c alpha sorry some of this pen is not working very well these four atoms define uh, the omega angle okay now the co nh group which is shown over here which is uh, repeat repeated again and again across the main chain and this is the group shown over here has a very special geometry it is a very flat plane and that is because the co nh bond and i'll talk about this i'll repeat this in the future is a partial double bond not allowing these this particular angle to move so this angle pretty much always is at 180 degrees right whereas the phi angle and the psi angle these are both torsion angles have the ability to rotate uh, across this central uh, bond by about 360 degrees okay now remember the concept of phi psi omega and their definitions and remember that one can approximate each of these atoms which we are talking about carbon nitrogen hydrogen oxygen as hard spheres and the sphere basically dictates the electron cloud uh, around these atoms okay now this is called as a hard sphere approximation and i'll come to why this is very important so let's go to the next slide and see why this is important now many years ago uh, indian scientist called gn ramachandran tried to build models of proteins because this was in the 1960s and 70s after dna structure was solved modeling of uh, structures was very popular and crystallography for proteins had actually taken off much before the crystallography for dna so there were a few structures which were solved out there i think myoglobin was the first structure and but the question was that was just one protein there were hundreds and thousands of proteins which had been purified could we predict the structure of these proteins based on the linear sequence of the amino acids and what gnr along with a few of his students did is that he said let's start making models of proteins he was particularly interested in the protein collagen which he was working with but generically he and many others were looking for the basic rules by which you could predict the folded state of a protein from just the linear sequence of amino acids so what ramachandran did is he took uh, sorry about that he basically took made models and he took uh, in these models he kept on changing remember these were models of the kind you you saw watson and crick make these were large scale models uh, which basically with each atom being as large as let's say the palm of your hand and you could put them together uh, knowing the length of the bonds because pauling had already defined the alpha helix and also the length of the bonds and you could try and build structures in space and the phi and psi angles were very well defined and as i have already told you uh, omega always is pretty much 180 degrees omega doesn't really change in most of the structures 
So if you varied phi and psi through, through, from a range of let's say zero to 360 degrees, you could basically visualize these models like Lego models in three dimensional space. And what he basically found is that if you now take this three dimensional representation, ignore omega, which as I said, is always at 180 and just keep on varying phi and psi, you can convert a three dimensional information of a folded state of a protein into two dimensional information where you plot in a X, Y axis, uh, phi shown over here, sorry, phi shown over here and psi shown over here with phi on the X axis, psi on the Y axis and the range uh, being from minus 180 degree to plus 180 degree, which is basically a 360 degree rotation along the torsion angle. And this is not uh, Ramachandran's uh, uh, data. This is a data which is basically about two to three years old. What you see over here is when we take all the hundreds and thousands of structures, protein structures in the protein data bank, and we, let's say there is a, a structure of an amino acid, which is, uh, let us say, 100 uh, amino acids long. And let us say for this uh, 100 amino acids uh, long structure, remember there is a peptide unit along, which is a repeating unit along the structure. This goes from one all the way to 100. And for each peptide unit, there is a phi angle, sorry, psi angle, and there is a phi angle. There is a psi angle, there is a phi angle. And if you plot for each unit, phi versus psi torsion angle, you get these dots uh, in, in a two dimensional representation. And what Ramachandran basically found that these dots did not occupy all the space available, all the three dimensional space available. Remember, this is a two dimensional representation of a three dimensional object. And he found that many, many places, and I'm going to use red as a color, all these spaces were not occupied at all. So phi and psi could never in a combination be any of these angles at all. Most of the phi psi plots, the angles were in two major areas, which is let's call this, let's, uh, I'm being a little uh, weird over here, but let's call this North America and let's call this South America, okay? So uh, a large number of dots were in North America and a large number of dots were in South America. There was a little bit in Antarctica and let's say a little bit in Asia, but the rest of the plot was completely empty. And when he looked closely at these dots, he realized that all alpha helices had torsion angles roughly over here. Let's try and see what this torsion angle is. So for example, the torsion angle over here is, let's say minus 90 and over here it is minus 40. So, a phi of minus 90 and a psi of minus 90, if you had a torsion angle like this, you were pretty much in an alpha helix. So the location of that particular um, uh, peptide, main chain peptide was in, in an alpha helix. If you had, uh, let's say a psi of 160 and a phi of minus 90, it was pretty much in a secondary structure, which was a beta sheet, all right? And there were very few dots on the right hand side of the grid. And this basically uh, turned out to be a, a, a right handed alpha helix. So it is an alpha helix, which is not the same handedness as, as uh, this alpha helix. All right. So JN Ramachandran basically found out a way to do the following. He used a hard sphere approximation. He built models. He found a simple way to represent in two dimensions, a three dimensional model. He used the phi psi angles to plot and he found to his surprise that these phi psi angles were restricted in space. They could not occupy any region. They could occupy only specific regions. And when you extrapolate back to three dimensions, you realize that this meant that when you turn torsion angles around each other, there were many places where they would not, would, which would not be allowed. And why were they not allowed? They were not allowed because while turning these torsion angles, the R groups of the side chains were coming too close to each other. And if they came and knocked against each other, those particular angles were not allowed. And that is why a huge amount of this torsion space is completely empty, okay? So this is the representation we have now. We know that the left-handed helix basically comes over here. 
beta sheets have phi psi angles over here. Uh, right handed alpha helix is pretty much over here. So are pi helices, three turn helices. These are all different kinds of helices. So we now have a map as defined by G. N. Ramachandran, Shashi Shekharan, and Ramakrishnan. These are the three scientists who worked uh, in uh, in the Indian Institute of Science for this definition. And uh, this became a very famous uh, plot using very simple models and hard sphere approximations, and just turning in models torsion angles around each other, and realizing that the amount of uh, rotational space available in a three-dimensional model was restricted. And these restrictions were specific torsion angles of phi and psi, and they then could be related to secondary structure elements in the protein structure. Shown here is a very famous picture. Uh, this was the visit of uh, Sir Linus Pauling, shown over here, and Dorothy Hodgkin. <coughs> She's from the United Kingdom, and you'll hear a lot about her. She was also a crystallographer. And here is GNR. GNR. Uh, this is a crystallography meeting held in Chennai, Madras. God knows, maybe 60 years ago. And over here are the famous uh, papers in bottom, which are the five and six, for example, are the two papers which define uh, rotation around phi psi space and the development of a simple way, which is the Ramachandran map. And one and two are also very famous papers uh, by G. N. Ramachandran, where he basically solved the structure of collagen, modeled the structure of collagen would be a better idea, because collagen like DNA is basically a fiber and they use fiber diffraction to, to solve these structures. These were very exciting times for Indian biology because Alex Rich, who you have heard of as part of the RNA club and also somebody who was a very famous crystallographer was competing with GN Ramachandran for the correct structure of collagen. And some of the who was right arguments are still going on in, in this century about who, who really got the correct structure for collagen. Was it Alex Rich or was it G.N. Ramachand? 